Hey everybody, Photo Joseph here. I'm gonna do a slow motion test. So here's the thing, as you probably know, I like to shoot in 4K 60p, 4030p timeline. That allows me to have 4K footage, which is usually gonna go out 30p, but if I wanna slow it down to 50%, i.e. 60 frames per second, I can do that and I don't lose any quality, right? Because I have frame for frame going on the timeline. If I do a slow motion of something that was shot at 30p, then it has to add frames. The software has to add frames, so I shoot at 60, so I can put it on a 30p timeline, slow it down 50% and get frame for frame. But sometimes you want more than that. Sometimes I want more than 50% slowdown. So the choices are to either slow it down further in post and let the software add the frames or shoot at a lower resolution at 1080p and let's say shoot it at 120 frames per second so that I get that same 50% and then 50% again slowdown. But of course I'd be shooting at 1080p and have to scale it up. So this is what we're testing here. I've got dueling GH5s here. One of them is set to shoot at 4K 60. The other one is set to shoot at 1080p at 120 frames per second. We're gonna put the two side by side on a 4K 30 timeline and see which one looks better. We've got Ryan over here on the punching bag. He's gonna wail on that thing for a couple of minutes for us, um, or maybe a couple of seconds, and we'll slow those down, put them side by side and see what we get. So we're ready to go. This first shot is the 60p clip on the 30p timeline. This is how the vast majority of my 60p footage gets seen on a 30p timeline, no changes to the shot. We're basically looking at every other frame that was captured. So we're seeing it play back in real time. Next, we're gonna look at the same clip, but set in Final Cut to play at 50% speed which in Final Cut you actually say automatic speed, which means it takes every frame of video and maps it to one frame on the timeline. So we are seeing it at half speed. We are also looking at every single frame that was shot. So this is the advantage of shooting 60p when editing 30p. I can do a 50% slowdown, but have perfect frame for frame capture and playback. Next, we get into the entire purpose of this test. I'm gonna take that same 4K 60p shot and slow it down again, slow it down now to technically 25%, so that we are not only playing back every frame on the timeline, but actually inserting an extra frame. So we're gonna be playing it back as if it was shot at 120 frames per second, which of course it wasn't, it was shot at 60. So Final Cut is going to have to add a frame in between each one. Now, we're gonna see some problems here pretty quickly because of the distance, the delta between frames, but we'll come back to that. You're gonna see this playback three different times using three different rendering methods. Final Cut allows you to do normal, frame blending, and then optical flow. Optical flow is normally the best, but in a situation like this, it really doesn't work out so well. But let's just take a look and then we'll explain what we looked at afterwards. So what the heck just happened? What did we see here? Well, some of you probably knew this was happening. As I said in that note earlier, you knew exactly what was gonna happen here. Frame blending, optical flow, any type of blending for footage like this just really isn't gonna work out so well. Here's, here's what's going on. So when you tell the software to slow down the shot, it has to create a frame in between. So you have an A frame, a B frame, and then it's gotta create something in between. Let's say an A frame and a C frame, that's what the camera shot, it's gotta create that B frame it has to create that thing in the middle. If there is a little bit of movement from frame to frame, that's not a big deal, right? So let's just say that this camera is moving across the scene and one frame is here and then the next frame is here. Well, that in between isn't very much of a calculation. And if there's motion blur, which we normally would get when we're shooting video, we have some kind of motion blur, it's even easier because there's already this blurry smear of this thing moving here and then it's a blurry smear here. So creating that blurry smear in the middle is not that big of a deal. However, when you have 
motion that's so fast that your object goes from here in one frame to here in the next, the in-between frame basically has to be completely created from scratch. So depending on the mode that you're using, you may see a blending of multiple frames or you may see the software trying to create a whole new frame. So let's take a look at some of the frames frame to frame and take a look at what we actually just saw here. First, let's go back to the original shot. As I go from frame to frame here, you can see that there's quite a bit of movement between two frames. So that is what the software has to calculate the difference between. So now let's look at some different ways that the software actually did that. First, we have normal speed ramping, which basically is just doubling up frames. It hasn't done any type of interpolation. So you can see here we have one frame, two frames, those are the same, and then three, there's another new frame, and then four is the same as three, and so on. So all it's really done here is taken every frame and just duplicated it. So this isn't doing anything except filling the gaps with the previous frame. Next up is frame blending. Now frame blending is taking two different frames and blending them together and almost like as if there was a cross dissolve between them. Definitely not ideal for this situation, but it is better than just duplicating the previous frame. Then we get into optical flow. Now optical flow usually is really, really good, but you can see here that it is doing all kinds of weird things where it has tried to create a frame that didn't exist and it just has all kinds of strange artifacts in there. So what would make this actually work? Well, one of the things I didn't tell you is that I actually shot this at a very, very high shutter speed. I was actually shooting shutter angle. I think it was 11 degree shutter angle, but it's super, super high shutter speed so that every frame of video is rock solid sharp. It's really, really tight, sharp shot. I didn't think that through very well because when you're doing frame blending, it actually is beneficial to have some blurriness to the frames like I was talking about earlier, which I don't have here. So this really didn't work out. Now, had I shot it at a shutter angle where there was a bit of blur in between, I think this would have turned out a lot better. But before we get down that path, why don't we take a look at the 1080p footage and see what that looks like. So the first shot here will be the 1080p footage playing back natively, unscaled, so you're going to see it smaller on the screen. However, this was shot at 120 frames per second for a 30p file. The camera has already done the retiming, so we are seeing frame for frame on the 30p timeline playing back from 120 frame per second shot. All right, that looks fantastic, right? It's really smooth because we're seeing an actual frame of video for every frame on the timeline. It looks beautiful, super smooth, nice slow motion, but it's small. So let's scale it up to 4K and see how that looks. Not too shabby, right? That's looking pretty good. So maybe this is a better option. Maybe scaling from 1080p up to 4K is a better option. But before we make that final decision, let's take a look at the two side by side. So we're going to look at the 4K with the frame blending next to the 1080p scaled up to 4K. Well, the good news here is that the 4K is definitely sharper, but with that weird frame blending that we saw earlier, it clearly hasn't worked out very well. That 1080p shot looks nice and smooth, but it is a little bit softer. Now, here's where you've got to decide what's more important. Is it more important to have that really smooth, perfect, flawless slow motion, or to have the shot that's really sharp? You can't have both, at least not with this configuration. So right now, I've just done this frame scaling, this uh, scaling from 1080p up to 4K, on the Final Cut timeline. I know that there are third-party apps that will do scaling that are supposed to be better, so maybe you can get better results with other software, uh, third-party apps, plugins, and so on to, man to give you a little bit better scaling. Also, maybe I could just add a little bit of sharpening in here. I haven't done anything other than scale it up in Final Cut, so we possibly could get that a little bit better. Also, we could possibly get a better 4K result by, as we talked about earlier, doing a slower shutter speed so we have a little bit more motion blur, giving the software something more to work with. So, I think at this point, if I'm shooting something that's really high speed action where I want that really crisp motion, I'm probably gonna shoot it 1080p. 
If I am shooting something that's a bit more slow moving, maybe just a camera pan that I want to be uh, even slower than it was, then, and I'm shooting at 180 degree shutter angle, so I've got that nice soft blur in there, then I'll probably get away with it. But if I'm doing something where that beautiful slow motion is most important, probably gonna go for the 1080p, shoot it at the 120 frame per second, or even more, because you can go higher on these cameras, and get something that's really, really pure slow motion, and maybe just add a little sharpness or something else to try and get a little bit more clarity out of the shot. You should run your own tests, and if you do, please let me know in the comments what you come up with. But for now, that's the closest thing to a conclusion that I've got.